What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Digital Excursion, uh, the podcast where we talk about all things media, TV, movies, video games, everything, really. Uh, I'm your host, Marlon Abram. As always, I have Justin Poor. I'm dying. <laughs> fucking hot still. The heat wave is still going. Uh, and we got Tyron Lee. Long live the queen. <laughs> no, that's not the I was, way to start this podcast. I know. <laughs> I was actually going to start with that. I was going to, not like that. I was going to say uh, R.I.P. to the uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, passed away today at 96. She's crazy old crazy old one thing i don't even know what she does or what she did r.i.p damn (laughs) (laughs) what does the queen really do does anybody know they Um, they reign over the loyal subjects (laughs) don't they have like a uh, like a a system of government that they make stuff like make laws without her yeah Yeah, it's uh, it's more like a figure or like a um, the prime minister (laughs) Uh, so yeah, Boris Johnson, who was recently ousted, I forget. Oh, ooh. But he makes oh, all. No, this is in the politics show. Man, <laughs> we we barely know what we're talking about with the pop culture. Exactly. <laughs> I don't. I, just like from a, 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 a an American standpoint, I don't know why we're so concerned about what happens in England. Didn't we like break away from them? Uh-huh. Right, but then we still kept a lot of stuff. We did, but like, like when the royal wedding happened, why was it broadcast all over TV? Like, I, like I cared. Wasn't that chick American? No big deal. You no. said, <laughs> yeah, the the girl, the, <laughs> the chick. <laughs> oh, <that's a> chick. <laughs> <laughs> she she is American, yeah. And I think she's like half black. She was an actress. What? Talking about uh, Meghan Markle? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't care about English, England stuff. Then why'd you bring it up? <laughs> hey, man, I'm just giving, paying respects to the queen, all right? All right. 96 years old. She almost made it to a, a decade. Let, let me make this what? relevant. Doctor Who, The Office... No, I'm. Yeah, that stuff is cool, but like, why are we concerned about European politics? This is America. All right? America. We dumped all their tea in the harbor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You you brought it up, so you must care a little bit. No. We dumped all their tea in the harbor. We said, fuck you. (laughs) Anyways, uh, (laughs) welcome back, everybody, to the digital excursion. I already said that. Uh, if you like us, uh, follow us on YouTube and uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Subscribe and like. Uh, shout out to all the listeners out there. Woot, woot. Uh-huh. And uh, we're going to start off like this. We got a little bit of Apple news. Uh, some Thor news. Uh, some uh, Brendan Fraser, if you don't know who that is. You, you probably lived on the rock for a while. And some uh, Netflix show news. Uh, but at first, we're going to have Tyron... Start us off with the uh, the events that happened at the uh, Apple thing. Why am I blanking on the name? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um... the Apple event thing. <laughs> yeah, so, like, uh, this is the first time, actually, like, it happened in early September. It usually happens, like, mid-September. Every year this goes on. This only year they talk about is the iPhones, accessories like Apple Watch, AirPods they announce. What else they announce? I believe, and like some new technologies and stuff, which is kind of like. You this. said the Apple Watch. Yeah, the Apple oh, Watch, yeah. the AirPods, and the phone. I think those were the big things. That's what I at least saw. Yeah, the big three, and there's some like little, small, little improvements in other places, but um, this one is more like a. Uh, it's like a hump for me because I'm waiting for like the Mac updates and everything like this but um yeah they didn't release nothing about uh cpus huh yeah it's always usually towards the back end so like oh. this is just gets you like over like oh we're almost there now you know i don't mm. think it happens till like november maybe mm. um but yeah this apple event same as last year the only thing <laughs> oh, i have like <laughs> i have a few same old shit <laughs> it really is I have a- <laughs> 
issues with a few things, and I have like a couple likes. So I start off with the bad. Talk your shit. All right. So the naming, they should have never named it 14. Why? They, they dropped the S's. Because usually this is the S version of Grey. You know how there used to be like a 10S or like a 11S, a 12S? This is an S year. But didn't it though, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but didn't like the 10S and 10R come out with the 10? Yeah, yeah. No, well, the 10 came out and then the 10S came out the next year. And then I believe the 10R came out with the 10 though. The Did S version is always the year after. Mm hmm. Okay. Because it takes two years for actual, like, real <clears throat> improvements. So, when, so, since they dropped the S name, now that everybody's thinking it's a 14, it's a brand new phone. It's really a S year. If that makes, like, if you guys know the Apple lineup. So, you, it's like a recycled iPhone 13. It's like, it, or, or, or a, a polished. A more polished 13, yeah. Oh, okay. say that. Um... So, yeah, but they've been doing this for, like, decades. Like, iPhone 6 through the 8, all the same, but with a, a, a improvements. The 10 through the 14, everything's the same except for more improvements. So, it's just, like, it's been the same for a minute. Like, there shouldn't be nothing different, usually. Except mm -hmm. for there's, like, some few things with the pros and everything like that. Yeah. Apple watches. Oh. I will say, hold on, I'm sorry. I will say with the iPhone 14... I do like the uh, the little notch feature that they have at the top. I forgot what the the dynamic island thing. Island, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, that is know. pretty cool. Was that you... looks cool, but at the same time, there's still a freaking <clears throat> hole in the screen. Yeah, they. I don't think that's ever gonna unless they go with what One Plus Seven did and like put it like inside of the phone and you could pop it out. Wait, what do you mean a hole? Uh, there's a camera. There's like a camera still in there. Yeah. yeah. It's a sensor, so th so there's still, like, a black... Yeah, it used to be a notch, bar. but now it's a freaking hole. I don't understand and what people have been saying about this notch. What is this notch? A I'm, notch is, like... I'm looking at my phone right now. Is your phone you that old that it doesn't have the notch? I don't know. I got I got an iPhone XS. Look, look at the top, and you I'm see looking. a black dip. Like yep. This. Uh -huh. That's the, the notch. notch. Oh, that's the notch. So, yeah. what my understanding was is basically they took that notch... Made it digital so that it can like hold notifications and do the animation thing. Well, technically, it's what you're seeing. If you look at your notch right now, everything that you're seeing is still there. They just sliced it to make it more skinnier. So if you could look closely, you could see where they remove all the little black stuff, right? So they can make it like that notch more skinnier. So, but the camera, the face. Front facing camera still there, the sensor is still there. <clears throat> I believe there's some they put something else there, but it's just like squished. Mm hmm and Is that that's why is, the notch is a little bit smaller. Is that bad? Um we'll see. I mean it's not we'll see. It's, uh, it's, it's I no mean it's uh, like a personal preference. Like um the let me, uh, quick question. Does the notch line up with the little status bar at the top still? Oh uh, no. Uh, wait, what do you mean? Started, like like your notification bar at the top. Does it all, like, line up, like, fluidly or, like, seamlessly? Yeah. Yeah, it's all, like, just one piece. Yeah. Okay. Cause... It doesn't, like, it doesn't go, like, <laughs> dip, and then it goes back up. Because my problem with it is that... I'm sorry. I can see it in your face. <laughs> because, like, uh, I don't like the fact that just because people don't want bezels around their phone anymore is that they put the camera in the screen now. Yeah. So I guess while it still lines up with the status bar, I guess that's okay. And the fact that they're using it as like a little notification screen too, I guess that's cool. But I still don't like there being a hole in the middle of the screen. For the camera. Yeah. It's how is you, how, right. but how are the what's what phone do you have, Justin? The uh, Pixel Six, and there's a hole in it. But Does, doesn't every like if you're going to put a front-facing camera on the screen, one it has camera. to have a hole, right? Yeah, only one that unless you it. put it on the bezel, but everything is bezelless now. So oh, I get you. 
So what I do like about the OnePlus 6T is that they hit the notch and you have the option, though there, I mean, there was a notch, but you have the option to hide it with the black uh, notification bar. So yeah. it just blends in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what I loved about that phone. But uh, everything else is like, they're okay with it. <laughs> just having a hole in the phone. So one second before we move on with the Apple stuff, do you remember that one phone where you could attach like mods on the back of it? Oh yeah. And then you had like a full ass camera on the back of your phone. I think Red was trying to do that at one point, but uh, I got Motorola, Motorola. It was like Motorola, I think. Motorola. And that shit died out real quick. Yeah, moving parts, uh, not the business. Or it's not the part. business. Yeah. yeah. Damn. All right, keep going. Keep going. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, one more thing about the iPhone. What I hate about this new trend with all phones, really. Big phones are coming out more and more and more. I got small hands, okay? I need a small phone. And they stopped selling the mini. We need a phone for these baby hands. Uh. Think about the short people, you know? Like, look at this hand. I don't have no NBA hands. Come on now. Dog, you're taller than me. No. You are. He's right, though. Like, uh, I remember when phones used to fit in my hand. And now... It's a struggle just to type with one hand. I remember when yeah, phones used to fit in your pocket. <laughs> right. They still fit in my pocket. Well, like for girls. You see girls with those with those shorts and their phones are like sticking up like this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? I, yeah. I always felt like phones would get smaller and smaller and smaller. But now the fad is looking like they're getting bigger again. It's like going back to the 90s with those big chunky ones. You know? Yeah. Soon, soon enough, that? that was his phone. Oh uh, yeah, so really quickly, this is a. Uh, that's not gonna work with the background. It's all right. Anyway, so uh, this Pixel Six has like an inch and a half on height over this old phone that I used to have, this HTC One, and mm-hmm. they're like freaking huge now. They're like uh, mini tablets. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, soon enough, the phones are going to be indistinguishable from tablets uh-huh. if they keep going big. Well, they have the fold, so. Oh, the, the folding ones? Yeah, that's yeah. the tablet already. I didn't even think folding phones would come back, like flip phones. Oh, mm-hmm. well, they have that, but they actually have one that's like a library, like a book. Like you just... Yeah, the fold. That's ridiculous. <laughs> this phone madness needs to stop. <laughs> Let's go back to small phones. Exactly. I want a sidekick. They have small phones. You just uh, don't have the freaking Apple logo on them. So that's I mean, you. Apple still if sells you want it, the small phones. They're phone. available at other companies. Hey, those other companies' apps suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it for the iPhone, but. You know, they have the Apple Watch, which is uh, another improvement. I think it's Series 8. They have another version of the SE. Not too important. But the only this stuff was the same. Was the Apple Ultra. But this is more for, like, trail mountain runners or, like, deep mm. divers and stuff like that. So it could withstand, like, you know, whatever they go through <laughs> in the mountains and whatever deep divers. It has the... Um, go through the mountain or it's, to the ocean. It's got like the SOS feature. Oh, that's it. in the iPhone. Yeah, that, that's in the Apple Watch too. I think the new one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing, and then it could also like sense when you've gotten into a car crash to alert uh, emergency officials. So that was pretty exciting. I don't know if other phones can do that. Do um, do doesn't Pixel does that? I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't know. You think it can, like, sense when you get jumped in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> so Because so, someone needs to make a call. <laughs> you got You got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> We're calling the police. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd be a good thing. Hey, um, whoever's running Apple now, just take some notes. People living in the hood, in dangerous areas. I think they, they would take your phone if they see that <laughs> inch screen. No, it would have like a shock feature. All right, it's just. <laughs> it only recognizes your man and your sweat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all in all, uh, the Apple products don't change too much. 
Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> One more thing that I sent in the group chat. Uh, I'm going to post somewhere up on the video so everybody else can see it. Oh, that little graph. Yes. This is why I love Apple's graphs, okay? <laughs> I love watching their videos because they only compare themselves to themselves and then they just say the competitor, like whoever they're competing against. Like that could be anybody, but they don't just like say like which phone is directly they're competing with. So it could be like an old, or they say 2012 or 2022. So it could be like a phone that came out earlier this year or like a, like a not even a flagship phone. You don't know. Yeah. You just gotta trust them. It could be a Boost and Mobile. It could be a Boost Mobile. And if you look at it, A16 Bionic, and they compared it with a two-year-old or three-year-old chip. So what you could think about it is the same chips that came out last year, the year before, and 2019, or 2020 actually, so two years, you could say that they're all the same chip. They all have the same performance since they didn't com like compare it against the last year chip. Mm -hmm. So that's just, that's why I love Apple. Uh, you know? Yo, looking at this graph from a design standpoint, oh, it's beautiful. It's very nice, very clear, direct. Um, from an analytical standpoint, it doesn't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a graphic. It's not. It's not. It's not telling any kind of data, like yeah. you know, like any quantifiable data. No, nah, man. Look, the, the A16 Bionic. That line is the longest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the longest. This graph is for the lay person. All right. Not. Not. Not saying that you're dumb. It's just like people aren't really looking into the specs like that. If when they're looking at this graph, it's just, oh wow, this is a purple long line. It's, lo yeah. it's lo longer than the gray and the blue. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know it's better. Hey, hey, you gotta see the Mac uh, graphs too. It's kind of similar. That's why. Hey, I would say though, when I was watching the uh, like Apple had the the commercial thing that went along with all the new products, I would say Apple is more than anything than computers and phones and everything are masters of marketing. Oh, the yeah. co the commercials they make are like movies. You know, and that's just like, that's what really, I feel like, hooks up more people than anything else. Because they're basically saying, we got all the same basic shit, but we just made it a little bigger, mm -hmm. a little brighter, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little longer, you know? Yeah. But, the, but they're like shooting this whole fantastical movie. And I was just like, at the end of it, I was like, man, I think I need an Apple Watch, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you that most consumers, regardless of what side they're on, cannot tell you why their phone is better than someone else's phone. Mm -hmm. And they, they're just buying it purely because they want to pick a side. Or the color. Because I might mm -hmm. pick a side. Or black. the color. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, like, it's all black? I'm tempted it's to get an iPhone just because of the amount of case custom cases they make for <clears> phones. Oh, yeah. Other than that, I, I really don't care. I, I would get one for the camera. Uh, even though I don't shoot video like I used to, but I would probably get it for that. You know, like, if I was really doing more professional stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, phones are just to make calls, guys. Mm, sure. Calls, <laughs> you can look at I, I will too. say this, though, but nothing in recent history has been of note for a long time. Like, nothing has come out that's, like, groundbreaking. Out of Apple? Or like out of anywhere. anything, yeah. Like the the last thing I remember being excited for was like Siri, just to have like a AI assistant on your phone. Now that shit's everywhere. Yeah, and Good. other than that, it's always just like it's faster, it takes better pictures. Yeah, yeah. Got different um, uh, lenses. The watch is bigger. It has a temperature sensor now. Uh, yeah. You know what? It's a thing, you too. Can, you can ping a GPS satellite. So you can find uh, your your lost <laughs> relative in the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's nothing really that, you know. Groundbreaking. Groundbreaking, yeah. Yeah. They're just feeding us the same old shit. Mm -hmm. And we eat it up. Not me. I buy the cheap phone. <laughs> oh no, I still got a cheap phone too. I'm not changing this phone for 
as long as it lasts. Mm-hmm. Oh me. <laughs> and look, uh, the, the the price for this this phone now is like over a thousand dollars. Like, how do people afford this shit now? Exactly. I just paid off my phone. I'm not about to get another one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like buying a little computer every time. Yeah. Can't do that. No. No, I won't even buy myself a real computer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and with that, uh, just to let you guys know, we're going to skip over a little bit of topics because uh, we have a slight time crunch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, hey, get your Apple products, you know. If, the, if, that, if that's what you want, you want to pay $700 monthly, by all means. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about Thor 5, all right? Thor 5 reportedly uh, not happening with Taika Waititi. Uh, Justin, as our uh, resident Pacific Islander. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> says, says the man that has the island background. This is... <laughs> This is Redondo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> and where's Redondo Beach? In the Pacific? <laughs> You're right. Yeah. It's not an island, though. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, tell us more about this. <laughs> uh, basically, with the reception that Thor 4 received about uh, people not liking that, it, that it's focused way too much on comedy, uh, Taika Waititi was ousted from... Uh, directing Thor 5. That's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, I think if they just rein him in a little, he could do better. Yeah, uh, I was uh, I was just actually watching uh, Thor again because it came out on Disney Plus uh, today. And I was like, you know, at first when I saw the movie, I was like, okay, it's all right. It's like, you know, it's, I ain't hate it like everybody else hated it. And I'm watching it again. And I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's fine with me. It's just uh, he's going full YTT on this one. That's what yeah. it seems like. And it might be <clears throat> it's a little too much for, for people, I guess. But the only thing is, like, if they're going to kick him out. OK, first of all, why are they doing five Thor movies? That's a lot. Thor was uh, rejuvenated. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was going to say. He was, uh, by, he was by, by w- Taika Waititi. Yeah. He's the reason that Thor is so popular now. Mm. And now they're going to kick him off the project. It's kind of messed up. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you went, uh, you, went, you went full Waititi. You know? You never go full Waititi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I personally think they need to kill the Thor storyline eventually. I don't know if I want to see six, seven movies of Thor. I don't mind at this point. Like, as long as I got good stories to tell, I don't care. I guess, man. Uh, I know Chris Hemsworth, he's always coming back for the bag. Yeah. But uh, did they say who they might have instead? Uh, not yet. Mm. So we'll, we'll keep, keep you guys updated on that. I feel like it's going to still be Taika Waititi. He'll bring him back. Hmm. Uh. He's a hot. Know. He's a hot commodity right now. He is, yeah. but I don't know. He's What's bringing he... in a lot of dope. Cause like people complain that they turned uh, Thor into like Guardians. So what if they just get James Gunn? To... <laughs> yeah, you know that. Yeah, the new Thor does have a Guardians esque uh, feel to it. <laughs> just cause they're in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, for, yeah, for a little bit, but not like James Gunn and Taika Waititi. Their movies have a similar kind of like feel to them. Mm-hmm. You know? That's what I think. Not all of James Gunn's movies, but you know what I mean. Yeah, they're both yeah. Uh, comedic. Uh, they don't take themselves too seriously. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I- I'll still watch it. Yeah. <laughs> um. This weekend, over the well, no, over the week, at um, I, I forget which film festival it was, but they showed a viewing of uh, the first viewing of Brendan Fraser's *The Whale*. Uh, Brendan Fraser, if you don't know who he is, he is an actor, most notably known for the Mummy series, uh, *George of the Jungle*, one of my favorites, uh, and who was uh, mysteriously cast out of Hollywood a couple years ago. Uh-huh. But now he's making his comeback. 
in the the A24 movie The Whale where he got a six minute standing ovation. Uh, do you guys know who Brendan Fraser? I'm pretty sure Justin knows. I wonder if Tyler nah, knows. I don't know well, you said the mummy, so I watched all the mummies. <clears throat> so he, if he's the main guy, then he, he is the know. main guy. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. You ever watch George of the Jungle? I skipped that one. George of the Jungle 2? Skip. <laughs> George of the Jungle, the cartoon? Exactly. Skip. <laughs> I don't even think it was Brendan Fraser. I don't think it was Brendan Fraser. I think even number two, they switched out Brendan Fraser for somebody else. Uh, yeah, of course I know Brendan Fraser. Looney uh, Tunes back in action? Yeah, if you if you grew up uh, in the early 90s, 2000s. Yeah. Oh. You knew who he was. Oh, you oh. froze a little bit. Okay. Uh... We'll, I'll, I'll put the uh, I'll speak over when you froze, <laughs> as you. <laughs> so, uh, so if you grew up in the early '90s or the early 2000s, you know who Brandon Fraser was because uh, he was in The Mummy mm-hmm. and George of the Jungle, which were like pretty prominent movies back they, then. Yeah, they were hit movies. I wasn't a, a huge fan of The Mummies. I mm-hmm. saw them, but uh, it was mostly George of the Jungle for me. Huh. She was like the so discount of Tarzan. And also... Uh, oh, wait. I, I did, but that shit was scary. Wait, what? It was. Eric the Mummy was Ride at Universal? Oh. I, I was, that. I was scared of that shit. <laughs> they I took think I the, went uh, into Beatles. the Mummy Maze back when that was a thing. But I don't think I went on the ride. Like at Horror Nights? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I went on that one. Mm-hmm. And get on the maze, but they took out those beetles on the ride. Sad. Oh, was that on uh the tram ride? And on the actual ride. Oh, okay, okay. I remember the tram part where they're like, uh, "Watch your feet, everybody." There's beetles, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they would shoot at you, but it felt real. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Brendan Fraser's making his comeback. Um, I say comeback lightly because uh. He's had a couple roles before this movie that's getting a lot of praise. Before that, he was uh, in the show Doom Patrol, which is a DC property show. Uh-huh. And when I – like, he just plays the voice of a, of a guy named Robot Man who – Nope, he's also in the suit. You're, no, he's not in the suit. Yep, he's in the suit. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. He's too big to fit in the suit. He's in the suit. <laughs> I'm going to Google this. He's in the suit. He may or may not. Patrol. He may or may not be in the suit. I don't think he's in the suit. I think he's, he's just the, the voice. Suit. All right, hold on. Intermission. Let me, let, let, me, <laughs> let me prove Justin wrong. I was about to say Jason. Let me that's prove the, Justin wrong. That's his catchphrase in the show. <laughs> All right, Tyron, talk to the people. Hey, people. So we're- All right. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> It says Robot Man, played by Raleigh Shen- Shannon. He's in the suit sometimes. <laughs> Maybe sometimes, but he's most... I think he's just the voice, man. <sighs> <laughs> Anywho. All right. Yeah, but... Besides the point, he's still great in it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He has been great as the voice and or... <laughs> physical person uh-huh. of Robot Man, you know, I feel like that was his first comeback into Hollywood because he was he's really great in that show. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to see the movie. I'm gonna watch the movie. I'm excited to see how far his career goes from here. I don't know if they're gonna oh, make did it. You get cast out. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, from what I've heard, around the time I think just right before the Me Too movement. Uh, the, uh, Brandon Frazier had like um, opened up about some sexual harassment that happened to him from like a producer or somebody higher up, right? And that got him like blackballed in Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, so it was like right before Me Too hit. You know, he wasn't in that pocket yet. He, so he, he waited. <laughs> He he got in trouble for that one, so which is like it's a shame. It's 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 so much of a shame, but it's good to see him. Uh, you know, people accepted him back into movies because he's really good. At, he's a really he's a pretty good actor. He is a good actor. He's 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 very funny. Yeah, 
But it's just like seeing him as George of the Jungle and now oh. seeing him now. I know Tyron, you probably don't know what he looks like now. He does yeah, not. I'm about to look it up. He looks like a robot. What? I, I, I was going to say he looks like the whale. He looks like Brenda Frazier. Uh, let's just say he's, he's put on a couple pounds now. He has, only because the he, world has been unkind to him. Yeah, he doesn't have the abs anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But now, you know, people oh. appreciate him for his uh, acting ability. Yeah, yeah. They don't want him for his body anymore. Yeah. They want what he could bring to the screen. Mm-hmm. You see him? Yeah, I see him. It's a big difference, huh? Yeah. Yeah, big difference. <laughs> <laughs> nice, subtle. What's this well movie about? Uh, a man struggling with his weight. Yes. Oh, so, so did mm. he get big for the part? I believe he put on a suit. He uh, he was a little big before that though. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's not method acting. No. <laughs> it just uh, happened. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. 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 But uh, hey, kudos to Brendan Fraser. Keep uh-huh. uh, keep doing what you do. And if you like Brendan Fraser and you have not watched Scrubs, uh, watch uh, his episode on Scrubs. I believe it won uh, an award. What's the, what's the TV awards again? Uh, yeah, Emmy. Emmys, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. it won an Emmy for for uh, <clears throat> writing for that episode. Hmm. Yeah. Man. Uh, moving on, guys. Uh, blockbuster. I'm sorry. <laughs> Netflix <laughs> is going to release a show about Blockbuster on its platform. Um, very ironic, in a way, mm-hmm. that uh, Netflix will have a show about Blockbuster. But uh, it's it, to me, it's looking like a workplace comedy, kind of like, um, what's that show, uh, Superstore, something like that. And it's starring uh, Randall Park and the, uh, the girl who played in... Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I don't. I don't know her name. Do you know her name? Oh, oh well. Uh, but yeah, sounds cool to me. I don't know. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, I just like it for the fact that the story is that. I mean, the real world story is that um, Netflix was a company that offered itself to Blockbuster. Blockbuster laughed off. The offer for them to buy it, Did or they? to buy yeah to buy Netflix, and Netflix ended up taking off and killing Blockbuster, and now they're making a show about Blockbuster. Hey, they're reviving Bo- Blockbuster. That's what uh, they're doing in a way, in some kind of way. There's st- still technically that one last Blockbuster out there. Yeah, it's like in um Canada, right? I thought it was in Ohio. Oh, yeah, still in America somewhere. Yeah, I've heard that that blockbuster they have to buy their own movies in mm-hmm. order to like rent them out. Yeah, that's weird. There's a well, there's no parent company anymore to to send them stock. So so, so they own that whole like entity of blockbuster, huh? The people who mm-hmm. work there. Mm-hmm. Weird. Why don't they just close down? I mean, why not? Like. Why not stay open? Because they're the last blockbuster. They're gonna get people coming from you know out of state just to go to the last one. That's true. I actually think they filmed uh, uh, Captain Marvel there at that last blockbuster. I think so. Right, right. Yeah. And like, you know, there's still people that want to rent physical media. Not me. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> I mean, Redbox is still a thing. So. Redbox is still a thing, which is mm-hmm. weird. But I guess people don't want to pay that. Uh, what is it now? Fourteen, twenty dollars a month. Oh, a lot. No, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just remember I never went to Blockbuster. To really? be honest with you, no. Oh, you missed out. No, I never went to. I always went to Hollywood Videos. It was around right around the corner from my house. Shoot, I would go to uh, mom and pop rental shops before Blockbuster even opened. Damn. Like, they like, still have uh, some too. Yeah. Uh, I, so I have like fond memories of just like renting video games and movies and yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah me too. Turning them and then getting in trouble. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole reason why I own the Jimmy Neutron VHS. Damn, you must owe like a thousand dollars. It was uh, mysteriously underneath the seat of the car, so we couldn't oh, even turn I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna tip off the last blockbuster that they can collect from you. It was ho- it was Hollywood Videos, all right, and they're they're bankrupt. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I also remember getting um, um that game, like getting uh, Ready to Rumble or something like that on PS2 mm-hmm. or PS1. It was good times. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It was good times. Yeah, I remember going all the way to a blockbuster before there was one in my city. I think it was in, like, two cities over. And, like, mm-hmm. going there just to print out Pokemon stickers from uh, Pokemon Snap. Like, you could take your game and plug it into the machine and then print out stickers of the pictures that you took. <laughs> Damn. What? Hey, yeah. hey, Justin, how old are you? Really old. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I'll be even older in two months. I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's true. Or not even too much. Not even two months. It's like a month. (laughs) Everybody send uh, uh, Justin some birthday pics. Uh. I mean, messages, messages. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, You you know, when I saw the promotion for the show, Mm. have have you ever seen the Amanda show? Yes. I, I thought it was a block blister show. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I, I vaguely remember that. The the old sketch on the Amanda show where it was like a like a blockbuster but like a rip off blockbuster and they made all their own movies in the back of the store. Mm. Yeah. I thought it was like a show about that or something. Yeah. But yeah, blockbuster. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fun memories. Um, we got a little bit of time left. Um, anything else you guys wanted to uh, get into? Um, the three Austin Power movies are out on Netflix. Everyone should go watch it. We, uh, I only know Goldmember. That's the, the one I remember watching. The, the internet was the the man international man of mystery. Mm-hmm. The first one. And then the Spy Who Shagged Me is the second one, and then Gold Members the third. I know the third, the third one because it got Beyonce. Yeah, all of them very funny. I love them. Classics. Shout out to Mike Myers. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's getting up there too. Yeah. Oh, what an age? Yeah. Yeah. Last time I, I saw him in like an interview or something. I was like, Yo, this man looks like he needs help. <laughs> you know the. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, uh, black don't crack, but I was trying to say like the white ain't right. Oh, whoa! <laughs> That's not what I meant. Yeah, right, no. So on, on that he's, little note, he's sixty um, years old. Sorry. I would like to add that my comment from last episode regarding Mothra and white women was not a racist <laughs> comment towards white women. I was just making a joke that. Godzilla likes Mothra. I just want, don't want to get canceled before <laughs> <laughs> before I'm even famous. You better ease off on those white women, man. I, right. I like white women, man. <laughs> they might not like you after these episodes. The, uh, Elizabeth Hurley is in, in the first uh, Austin Powers and Heather Graham's in the second one. They're both beautiful, you know? <laughs> I remember I couldn't watch Mike Myers growing up. I mean, um, I'm sorry, Austin Powers mm. growing up. It was a, uh, you know, I was a kid when these movies came out. They were very uh, raunchy. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I remember it being really funny. He played like everybody, right? No, he just played uh, Austin Very and people. Dr. Evil. And Fat Bastard. Oh, yeah, Fat Bastard. Son? Oh, yeah. No, I think Seth Green played Dr. Evil's son. Yeah. Oh, uh. Yeah. Oh. You know what? I Okay. The Austin Powers movies <laughs> always reminded me of the Nutty Professor right. in, in that way. That was like, uh, you know, that time. What'd you say? Tyree? Oh, I was going to say, who came first? Uh, the Nutty Professor. Well, technically, yeah. The Eddie Murphy, because there was one with... Um, there's an older Nerdy Professor, then there's one with Eddie Murphy. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, but it's just because, you know, Eddie Murphy played every almost, like, his whole family in that movie, and Mike Myers plays a lot of different people in the in uh, Austin Powers. I guess it's that parallel. Mm. Yeah. I guess they couldn't uh, pay for actors. Both uh, <laughs> putting on fat suits. And putting on fat suits, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which was also done in the episode of That's So Raven, too. Mm, you okay. right. <laughs> yeah, not... <laughs> the country yeah, cousins yeah. episodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I'm sorry. I know this wasn't on the topic list, but I'm just thinking about that. So Raven, um, have you seen this? How Orlando Brown is now? <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's a I, criminal on the run, right? I, hey, wait, wait. He, <laughs> no, that's Ezra Miller. <laughs> no. Yeah, he has a rap sheet too, though, right? No, he yeah. does. I was just watching an interview with him, and I'm like, it's very, it seems like two different Orlando Browns, because some interviews he's like sane and saying like, he's talking like a regular person. The other ones, most of them, <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> like in a whole nother universe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He may better, also though. be suffering from uh, mental health issues. Oh, for sure. Drug issues. <laughs> Too much I heard, cocaine. I heard uh, he just found Jesus. So where did he find him at? Bit. <laughs> <laughs> in the drugs. <laughs> Probably. Some people find him in the drugs. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I heard he's been getting better though. I heard <laughs> that uh, this is for his words, not mine. That uh, uh, Diddy gave him fellatio. That's what he said in the interview. Oh, he said. Um, um, I, I don't know if that sounds like getting better, Tyron. It, was that a recent or was that? Yeah. How recent? Like a, a month ago. It depends oh. on whether or not it was true. True. You, you're right. You're right. Now, I'm, if he's like just saying crazy things, just because uh, you know he's uh, not well, that's one thing. But maybe it did happen, and maybe then he saw the truth. Maybe Diddy's never gonna, uh, you know, he's never gonna admit it. Mm-hmm. Oh no! <laughs> but I don't think it's true. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's just like you know, Orlando Brown was a child actor and so many good things, and like he's just gone like. Oh. Off the rails, man. Uh, well, uh, it's it's interesting to see a, a lot of child actors. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's why I'm not famous. Hmm. Disney child actors happens it happens to them a lot. Yeah, same with uh, Nickelodeon. Oh, what did you say? With Nickelodeon. Same with oh, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. It's just child actors in general. I feel like it's mostly Disney. No, it happened, like, way before that, too. Like, uh, Corey Feldman, Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was he, well, he, he was, was in Nickelodeon. Uh, yeah, you're right. He, oh, I thought he was just short. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a problem. He was just short. What I'm saying is that it's a child actor thing. <laughs> I thought he was a full-grown man when he was uh, acting. He uh, wasn't? No, he was, he was, he was a kid. He he was the Different Strokes. Oh. Uh, Which actually, in Different Strokes, him and the guy who played his older brother both had problems. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think acting's hard on children, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to pretend all the time. I, I think so. You don't grow up normally like that. You know, you it's don't go to... that. It's uh, the adults taking advantage <clears throat> of these children. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's sad. Is that uh, Jeanette McCurdy just came out with her memoir. That's what I was just think. I was just gonna this, say that all the abuse that went on on the Nickelodeon sets, like yeah. yeah. Oh well, speaking of this, since we're talking about child actors, have you guys seen the movie Honey Boy? Uh, yeah. So Honey Boy is about the the life of Shia LaBeouf. When he's growing up as a kid and as a child actor, right? Mm-hmm. And like a week ago, he just said, like in an interview, that all the abuse that he got from his father and all the abuse he had as a child in the movie was fake. Like it wasn't like fake. I think it was just exaggerated, right? Um, 
I guess whatever news source I heard it from made it seem like it was more than exaggerated, like it was made up. Oh, just completely made up. Yeah. Okay. Was Which it I, about a true life his story, or was it just like a he was just playing a character? So when it came out, he he marketed it as this, this like an autobiographical mm -hmm. story, oh. like it was true. Yeah. Oh. And I guess recently. I guess I guess it's all fake. It's yeah. really really sad to hear. I mean, <laughs> I don't want him to go through abuse or to have gone through abuse, but it's like, you know, that's what you're marketing the movie as, and you know, that's what the movie is about: abuse to a child actor and how he how it affects him. So mm -hmm. to hear that it's a uh, probably more exaggerated than not. It's just like, wow, you know, that's kind of. Yeah, it's it, it downplays, uh, you know, people that have actually suffered through abuse. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. And I really liked that movie too. It was really mm -hmm. good. And then when I saw it, I was like, no wonder Shia LaBeouf is the way he is. Because, um, you know, child actor from Disney, you know, is <laughs> destined to go down that route. Man, you know, um, I probably told you these guys this story before. I uh, once tried out for uh, a Disney talent competition. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was a... I, you know, sometimes it feels like a fever dream because I only remember certain parts of it, but my mom remembers it. Mm -hmm. They would do, like, this talent search thing, right? And they would, like, set up... Like, do this, like, talent search event and whatever, and you could, like... Um, put your name down to perform on stage like just a random performance, right? And uh, there were, like, scouters out there who, like, probably talk to you afterwards or whatever. It's kind of like a competition, right? So I remember going to this thing because it was in my hometown, and my mom put me and my brother on the list to go on stage, right? And so my brother, he's like, I ain't doing that. I ain't going on stage. You know, it's embarrassing. And then they start calling our names, and then I walk up to the stage and start doing, like, I don't even remember what I did. I think I tried to do a handstand, but I was a little fat back then. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I remember getting, okay, this is all coming from the head of a, a probably a six-year-old's memory. <laughs> I remember getting a standing ovation <laughs> from, from my performance. <laughs> were, were you still in the handstand, so they were, looked like they were... <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I remember getting the standing ovation for my performance. And then at the end, like, I got off the stage, and I'm just like, oh, man, I killed it. I don't even know what I did. And my mom, she was like, all right, we're going home. And I was like, mom, they're going to announce the winner, though. Like, you just made me go on stage. <laughs> and she was like, trust me, we're going to go home. <laughs> you know, it's, and when I remember, it seems like a dream. But then my mom remembers it also, like, maybe not in that exact way. But uh, for a little while, man, I could have been, uh, been a child actor. Uh -huh. I could have been Corey on That's So Raven, but... No. <laughs> uh, that's So Marlon. It could have been That's So Marlon. <laughs> we'll never know. You know, think, things happen for a reason. Uh, Marlon in the house, you know? Okay. Exactly. You know, the universe... The universe just wanted me to work a nine to five mm -hmm. <laughs> Inst instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, dang. Poor child actors. Uh, and with that, everybody, it's, uh, it's a more uh, a shorter episode than usual, but it's all right. It's all good. Uh, any uh, closing words? Um, man, go watch She-Hulk. <laughs> Oh yeah! <laughs> Don't be afraid to throw it back. That's all I gotta say. Just let everybody know since uh -huh. She Hulk's last episode, number three, not the one that just came out today. Uh, Justin has been throwing it back nonstop. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, from the words of Little John, you know, bend over to the front, touch, you touch your toes. <laughs> I've never heard wiser words been spoken. <laughs> uh, I think that's a beautiful note to end on. Uh, everybody out there, don't be afraid to throw it back. Bend it over. Touch your toes. All right? Uh, thank you for listening to the Digital Excursion once again. Uh, like always, you can find us 
here on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts every Friday. Be sure to like and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you get, yeah. <laughs> it's hot, man. I'm losing my words. All right, everybody, we out. <laughs> I'm sweating. I am too. I'm about to turn on this AC. Fuck.